Okay, so this is another NMR problem, and I think this is a, a great problem, really fun problem. Um, it was actually a requested video, um, so thank you for the request. Uh, I think this request came all the way from Denmark, which is pretty neat. So in any case, um, this NMR problem, what we've got is we've got some unknown structure for B. We've got a molecular formula, which is nice. And then we're going to do a reaction with lithium aluminum hydride to form this um, new alcohol. Um, now, we are given the proton NMR spectrum for A, that's this spectrum here, and we're also given a proton NMR spectrum for B. So using this proton NMR spectrum, we should be able to figure out uh, what the structure for B is, and that is the goal of this problem. But since we've got the spectrum for A, I think it's a good idea just to go ahead and, and assign the spectrum for A first. So we'll go ahead and do that. The first thing that I'm going to look at um, is really just labeling all of my different protons. So we will label these three protons here, we'll call those A. Then I'm gonna have protons on this aromatic, aromatic ring, so we'll draw those in, H, 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 H. We'll call these B, we'll call these C. Then in my chain, I'm gonna have these methylene linkers, so I've got three of those. And we'll call these D, E, and F. And then obviously our OH proton, we can call that one G. Now, this OH proton, you may or may not see a peak for that, depending on, on what solvent you're in. Um, and in this solvent, whatever you know, this NMR was generated from, uh, we do see that peak. That's going to be this little peak here. Um, we would expect that to be broadened. Those OH peaks oftentimes, especially if there's some exchange happening, those are going to be little broad uh, peaks, and that's what we see here. So I guess we'll, we'll go ahead and label that here. So that's going to be G, uh, one high singlet. Now... Our peak for A, I think, is very clearly this peak here. This is going to be a three high singlet. And, you know, we've got this methyl group or methoxy group, and these are going to be isolated, right? There's going to be no splitting, uh, and they're going to integrate to three. So pretty clearly that's this peak here. Um, now, for these aromatic peaks, B and C, I talked about this in a, in a different video, but this is a, a very common mistake that people are going to make. And you might think that B should be shifted downfield because of the proximity to this oxygen. Uh, a lot of times when we're thinking about, you know, uh, oxygen interacting with our protons, it's going to be withdrawing electron density, shifting our peaks downfield. But in fact, in this case, it's, it's going to be doing the opposite, actually. And this sticky um, really explains what's going on there. So under our normal circumstances, that's what we see up here, a sigma bonded carbon with these hydrogens in, in the green boxes, this oxygen is gonna pull electron density away, right? It's, it's gonna have a, a polar bond between the carbon and oxygen pulling electron density away, causing a shift downfield because we're gonna be de-shielding these, these protons. And these peaks, right, this signal for these protons, that's gonna shift downfield. It's gonna be higher numbers. Now, for a system like this, which is what we have here, where we have a pi bonded carbon, this oxygen is actually going to be donating electron density, and the reason is because of resonance, right? The answer is always resonance, and if I draw this resonance structure where I move these electrons and form a double bond between the carbon and oxygen, that's going to sort of kick some of these electrons onto the carbon where that hydrogen is bonded. So that's actually going to be a shielding effect. We're going to be putting more electron density there, and we're actually going to see a shift, a shift up field for these protons. So these B protons, they're actually going to be the ones that are here, and then these C protons, those are going to be up here, and both of these should be two high doublets. Uh, two high because obviously it's, there's two of them, and then doublets because on the adjacent carbon we're only getting one uh, um, other proton, so splitting into a doublet. So maybe something that you wouldn't have necessarily expected, um, but a good thing for us to talk about. Now we've got these other three peaks, those are going to be our methylene linker peaks, and I think the easiest one to deal with is E. E should have the most complicated splitting pattern because it's going to be split by both D and uh, D and F protons. And if we look at our, our peaks here, clearly I've got a triplet here. Clearly I've got a triplet here. And this one looks more like a multiplet. There's multiple things going on. Um, and that's going to be because E is, again, split by both D and F. So that's going to be this peak here. We'll call that a three high multiplet. Um, some instructors might want you to call that a three high triplet of triplets. Um, but I think most instructors are happy with just calling it a multiplet. Now for D and F, we need to sort of decide which one is which. According to our sticky from before, if I've got these protons here, I should expect that withdrawing effect from that oxygen, which is what we talked about earlier. And so in fact, these F protons should be shifting downfield. So I'd expect these ones to be F and these ones to be D. Both of those are going to be two high triplets. F is going to be split by E into a triplet. 
uh, D is going to be split by E as well into a triplet. So two high triplets for F and D, with F being a little bit more downfield because of the proximity to this oxygen. All right, so that is the assignments for our A compound. And then we can start looking at this B compound. So right away, I'm going to sort of look for similarities and differences. So obviously, I think we've got some, some similarities in our aromatic region. These look exactly the same. Uh, I've got this three high singlet, so that looks exactly the same. This is definitely a new peak, right? So right here, this is going to be new. These, are, they could just be shifted versions of these, you know, E, D, and F. So those, you know, maybe a little bit unclear. We definitely have shifted a little bit. But this peak over here is, again, also very clearly a new peak. Now, looking at these two peaks, again, I see a three, uh, excuse me, yeah, a three high triplet. And I see what looks to be a two high quartet. Anytime you see this sort of triplet quartet, you know, motif, to me, that says right away an ethyl group CH2 CH3, where this three high peak uh, would integrate to a, uh, would be a triplet because of the splitting from the CH2 group. And then this two high group, it's a little bit shorter, a little bit smaller, should integrate to two and also be split into a quartet from the CH3 group. Obviously this R will probably be an, an oxygen or something like that. No extra splitting because this is a nice quartet. So sort of trying to put this all, you know, back together. I've got some hints here. Looks like my aromatic region stays the same. Looks like my methyl group stays the same. I'm going to add in an ethyl group. I've got some CH2 linkers here. Um, that's probably what's going on here. You know, we had CH2 linkers up here. Some shifting is going on, but sort of unclear at this point, this point in time. So if we go back and sort of try to, to bounce some ideas off this, I am going to have to come up with a, a plausible structure for something like this. Uh, you know, clearly our OH is gone, right? We're seeing that, that that OH is gone in this, you know, NMR. We might not necessarily see that depending on which, you know, solvent your NMR is taken in. So this is, this is something that's different. Um, and then I want to think about what do we know about lithium aluminum hydride? You know, are there some reactions that we know that lithium aluminum hydride can, can participate in um, that will actually end up giving us an alcohol. And the thing that jumps out to me, and I think another reason for this is that I've got an extra oxygen in my in my starting material. So I might think something like a carboxylic acid reaction or an ester reaction. And I think the ester reaction is really the key there. So if you're unfamiliar with your your you know different reactions that can be done, that's going to be a, a sticking point, right? When we're doing organic chemistry, we really need to have a, a sort of catalog of reactions that we can draw upon to do problems like this. If you don't have that, you know you're sort of going to be you know not in good shape. But if I look at this and I want and I think about my ethyl group, right? We're we're sort of going to have to add in an ethyl group somewhere. If I imagine adding in an ethyl group here, that that you know, solve some of my problems, but also leave some problems as well. I, I would have an extra peak, um, you know, from this D, E, and F. And I also need to have an extra oxygen. And that's why I said an ester uh, is sort of something that's, that's jumping out at me. So let's go ahead and, and make a guess. And the first step when you're doing a problem like this to, to sort of get to the end is you, you sort of have to put yourself out there and just make a guess. You sort of have to just say, well, let's draw something on the page and then we'll see if it makes sense. Um, and if it makes sense, great. Uh, if it does not make sense, that's okay, right? If it does not make sense, we will we will address it and we'll draw some something else. So this would be my first guess. This is the thing that I would put down first. Um, this methyl group's a little, little hanging there, but hopefully you get the idea. Um, so here, I haven't changed much at, at the very beginning, right? So I've got, can't see both at the same time, but um, you know, I've left most of this molecule intact, but I put an ester here and I chose two CH2 linkers because of this two CH2 linkers that I see here. And then my sort of isolated ethyl group uh, off of the end of the ester because this eth uh, ethyl group, you know, integrates how I would expect it to integrate um, and splits how I'd expect it to split based off of this bonding with the oxygen. So the next thing I would do is go through and label all of my peaks and C sort of if it makes sense. So we'll call this group here A, we'll call these B, C, D, E, F, and G. So we already talked about F and G. I'd expect this to be G, a three high triplet. We'd expect this to be F, a two high quartet. Now for D and E, those are gonna clearly be these two peaks here. Um, and again, deciding which one is which, uh, you know, might be something that that 
is a little bit confusing. Um, I'm going to go with this is D and this is E. Um, you know, my, my rationale there, I guess, as we look at this, this D is going to be directly bonded to, you know, my, my aromatic ring. That's going to shift it downfield a little bit. Um, you know, depending on your instructor, they might be meaner about this D and E, uh, but I'm, I'm going to go with that. I think that that's a good, uh, good guess. Now, for our aromatic region, just like we talked about earlier, the Bs are actually going to be more upfield than the Cs uh, because of that effect that we talked about um, here, where the oxygen bonded to the aromatic ring is actually going to be donating electrons. Um, you probably would see a similar effect over here as well. So these D and E assignments, you know, those might vary a little bit more, but I, I think this is a good a good assignment here. Um, and this this makes sense, right? We look we look through our molecule, and everything here makes sense. Uh, I think it fits nicely, and and I think this is a definitely a reasonable you know structure to propose as our starting material. Furthermore, if I react this with lithium aluminum hydride, I know that this is going to turn into a primary alcohol. I know that we're going to lose um, you know this this ethyl arm here, this ethoxy arm, and we're going to end up with a um, primary alcohol which would fit right our actual product A. All right, hope that that helps. Um, yeah.